Women's friendly people, what are we doing? I hope I look all right. In medicine, you may notice that the word cure is rarely used. But what if I told you that there's one company that may be developing a cure for anxiety. Would you believe me if I said the cure was LSD? MindMed, a clinical stage pharmaceutical company, is developing psychedelic compounds to treat a number of brain health disorders with a particular focus on psychiatry, addiction, pain, and neurology. In March of 2024, MindMed received a FDA breakthrough designation for its compound MM120 for the treatment of generalized anxiety disorder, or GAD. What exactly is MM120? According to MindMed, MM120 is a pharmaceutically optimized formulation of LSD, also known as acid. Fun fact, it's referred to as acid, not because it fries your brain, but because the full name of LSD is lysergic acid diethylamide. Now, LSD was extensively studied between the 1940s and 1970s as a potential therapy for various neuropsychiatric disorders. Now, what also differentiates MM120 is that it's ODT, or it's an orally disintegrating tablet. If you're familiar with LSD, which... I am not. It's often found as a liquid that is added to an absorbent paper or a sort of gelatin square. MindMed claims that the ODT formulation of LSD demonstrates a differentiated PK profile that leads to rapid absorption, better bioavailability, and greater therapeutic drug exposure over time compared to LSD. In their phase 2b study, MindMed conducted a randomized placebo-controlled dose optimizing study evaluating the effect on anxiety symptoms in patients diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. In the study, they evaluated four different doses of MM120 against placebo, and the doses were 25, 50, 100, or 200 micrograms. Now, the primary endpoint for the study is change in HAM A score, which is the Hamilton Anxiety Rating Scale from baseline to weeks 4 and 8. Now, the patients had to have a score of greater than 20, which represents a moderate severity. For the study, there was a five week washout period where they would gradually come off all of their other medications. Now, for the exclusion criteria, which means patients that were not allowed to be in the study were women breastfeeding or currently pregnant patients with a history of schizophrenia, psychotic disorders, or bipolar disorder. They also excluded patients that have had significant risk of suicidal ideation or patients that are not willing to discontinue their other medications. Now, in this study, they enrolled 198 patients. Now, each patient would get a single administration of MM120 or placebo. What's also unique about this study is that there was no psychotherapeutic intervention. They did have a person in the room, which they termed the dosing session monitor, but these session monitors did not provide any sort of psychotherapeutic intervention. During the treatment, they would have music, eye shades, reading, writing, and after, they would have no integration or ongoing therapeutic engagement. Now in the table, you can see the baseline demographics of the people involved with the average age being between 38 and 45, and the majority of the patients were white and had a baseline HAM-A score of around 30, which is on the more severe end of the spectrum. Now, what's also interesting about this is that oftentimes people talk about preparation and integration. They didn't provide any of that during this. The pre-treatment consisted of comprehensive informed consent process. Now we can see that about 80% of the patients completed the 12 week process. So here we have the primary endpoint, which was the change in their HAMA score. You can see that the patients experienced a statistically and clinically significant reduction in their HAMA total score at week 12. On this slide, you can see the response rate and the remission rate. Now a response is considered at least a 50% reduction in their overall HAMA score, while remission is defined as a HAMA score of seven or less remission being optimally better because it implies that there is no more anxiety left, which some would call a cure. Now you can see at week 12, which is again, three months after the patient had their one dose of LSD, you can see a 65% clinical responder rate and a 48% clinical remission rate. 48% of remission, meaning 48% of the patients had a score of seven or less on their HAMA score at week 12 after their one dose of LSD. The 100 microgram actually did a little bit better than the 200 microgram in both the response and the remission rates. And because of this, they decided that they're going to go with the 100 microgram dose 
for all of the phase three studies. When we look at the side effects, uh, we see that 99% of the adverse events were mild to moderate in severity, with 2.5% AEs leading to study withdrawal. And there were no drug-related serious adverse events. AE profile was consistent with the historical studies from the 60s. There was no indication of increased suicidality or suicide-related risk either. Now here is the table of the adverse events that were reported, with the adverse events being illusion, nausea, headache, hallucination, and euphoric mood. You can see from this table is that virtually all of these took place during the dosing, so during the 12-hour experience. Almost all of the adverse events disappear after the 12 hours is done. Now what's incredible about these phase two results in generalized anxiety disorder at 12 weeks is this durability with effect size over the standard of care. When you compare the effect sizes of generalized anxiety disorder treatment across the class, you can see that the effect size of MM120 is more than double the standard of care. This is after one single dose of MM120. And these effects start happening within 24 hours. This is happening without any sort of psychotherapeutic intervention by a facilitator. MindMed is about to start enrolling for their phase three trials. Now I think the data represents something truly different and it could be very interesting to see what happens with the phase three trial. You know, if, if patients can get better after one dose, I'm all for it. And if some of the adverse events that are recorded are euphoric mood, eh, I mean... Now in my last video, I got a lot of comments saying that the natural form of these medications are better or that pharma shouldn't be jumping into the space and what I offer you is a different perspective in that you know there's always going to be people that feel drawn to more natural medications which is why it's so important that certain states have started enacting different laws that would allow for the use of psilocybin. So in Colorado they allow for the personal use of psilocybin and they're building a framework so that people can go and not have a a diagnosis, but can go to these different treatment centers and organs doing that as well. There's also going to be people that are more drawn to something that is FDA approved because it's gone through a very standard and formulated clinical trial design. It's much more likely that an insurance will help cover the patient's medication, or in this case, their psychedelic experience, uh, than if the medication was not approved and help reduce the cost on the actual patient. Overall, it's a win for everyone. See what happens over the next few years as some of these companies start going into their phase three trials. So enjoy.